I've never heard her speak like that. Trust. Look. There's no way you're telling me this guy did no sort of exercise, sports, like whatever. Look at the reflexes on this dodge. Look at this. Matrix, matrix type shit. Whoa. Dodge that too. Close call. And then Manabee's like, All right, I bet this guy's serious. Let me, let me get into striking position. Yo, anime family, how you guys doing? Welcome back to AJ Anime. We're back again with a video. Something a bit different today. Something that you might not have been expecting, considering that the season is still currently going and we're probably gonna get a lot more seasons, but we'll treat this as kind of like a part one of this video. So this is a new idea that I had um and to be honest i'm not sure how it's gonna go i would like to start a series of this but i'll leave that guys i'll leave that up to you guys let me know if you like it or not um but what i want to do is a breakdown of characters from the classroom of the elite um and i think it's only right that we start with ayana koji or koji koji kun whatever you want to call him the goat the mastermind the genius so I want to start with him and what I intend to do is look at a series of kind of clips um, and break him down, um, kind of assess and analyze how he got to be in the person that he is, who we see in the anime um, and kind of try and predict what's going to happen in future kind of seasons i don't they may be foreshadowed so i want to try and look out for stuff like that too so i probably will miss stuff this is my first time doing it so you know um hopefully i will improve um and i guess we may miss stuff because it's going to be different from the light novel and the manga but i'm going to give it my best try um i do hope you guys enjoy it. i know you do like class mode dearly so hopefully this is something that you like and would like to see more of um but yeah let's get into Breaking down Anna Koji. Um, and yeah, hope you guys enjoy. Let's get it. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to really start off with was, was just seeing Anna Koji from episode one. Um, and from episode one, I think it's good to notice the characters who we had in the class. And I think the classroom of the elite really set that up well in episode one. Um, because most people from class D are actually on this bus. And at first I didn't notice it until I actually looked back at it. So let's take a quick look at who's actually on the bus. Because something very interesting happens here. Something very interesting happens. So I'm going to turn the music down just a tad. So it starts off with Kashida asking if Koenji could give up her seat to the old for, to the elderly lady now at first you'd think okay Kashida's a nice person and you know she cares for the elderly lady obviously later on we get to know that's not really what she's about right so Koenji doesn't want to do it and to be fair when I was thinking about this considering where we are currently right because we've just had the episode where because she just kind of told us her backstory she's kind of gone into why and what she became if you get what i mean and i think this was her first this was Kashida's first step in trying to be that person that everyone likes and this is where we first see Ayana koji now Ayana Koji just simply, at that moment, right, he didn't give up his seat. He didn't give up his seat. I don't, there's a lot of people in maybe society actually that would have given up their seat. However, I think this kind of shows the characters low key of class D. And he looks straight towards Herikta, right? Now, Herikta afterwards says, 
something that was very surprising to me considering that he only glanced at her. But I think this is just Koji trying to assess who's around him. I don't think what she thought he was trying to do was actually intended. So at this point here, although he's looking at her, right, she knows that she's getting glared at. She knows what she's getting glared at. So he sees the new school. So this is my new school. Doesn't think much of it straight away. Which, I mean, we know from episodes and, you know, he's a very, he's a very reserved, keep his thoughts to himself kind of person. So yeah, she goes, you were looking at me on the bus, why? Herikta pr- puts herself on a high ground as if she was talking down to Anna Koji. And I think now that I think about it, right, this is kind of how they wanted us to see it. She's someone that can talk up. She's someone that can talk to others, look down on others, thinking that she's a superior being. However, I think in this exact scene right here, which we wouldn't know at the time when we first see this, the tables are actually turned here. The tables actually turned. And Koji only looked at her. He didn't try to make any type of communication. He only looked at her. He didn't say give up your seat. He didn't say anything. However, he already has her, her Richter, coming at him. Which is weird when you think about it. Because it's just like, why are you so pressed about it? I looked at you, so what? This, is, this was the first sign when I look back at it now, in my opinion, as an anime only, like, of Koji having someone low-key on ropes. But we get to see more. We get to see more. And he just says, it's because you, like me, didn't seem interested in giving up your seats. So you don't like to get involved in stuff like that either. There you go. That's the, that's, that's the first characteristic of Ayana Koji showing uh, he doesn't want to get involved in stuff like that. Now, it's not even really a political issue. It's not really a big issue at all. It's only giving up your seat for an elderly lady, which most people actually should have done on that bus. You know, you respect your elders. So most people should have gave up the seat. And he was just saying, you know, I just assumed that basically you were like me, not really interested. Because Harita didn't look up once, she was in her book. But she just comes straight up with, don't assume I'm like you. Again, speaking down to him, doesn't that make you even worse? Again, keeps it to himself, doesn't really say it, but keeps it to itself. And then she goes, if you have no business with me, fine. Flicks her hair again, superiority. He just lets her go, thinks nothing of it, it's a drag, keeps himself to himself. Again, here we see Koji scanning the classroom. It's the first time everyone's sitting down or standing in class. It's the first time you get to see who's actually in the class. You see the characters in the class. Koji sat next to Herikta, which is where he's placed. But she says, an unpleasant coincidence. Again, thinking she above the class D rank. And this is when we didn't even really know that class D was probably the worst class that there is. And she's acting like this. So it comes to everyone introducing themselves. And Koji doesn't want to do it. There's no getting around it. I think because f- for for a second, there's attention drawn to, drawn to him. And he doesn't like that. That's not his character. He likes to be reserved. He doesn't like to, you know, have eyes on him. He just likes to chill. Maybe sit at the back of the class and not say much. Just get on with his own business. For the sake of my school life. <laughs> and he starts off with, uh, doesn't know what to say. Says who he is. I look forward to stunning with you. Introvert. Introvert. He could have said a lot more. He could have said a lot more. Considering he thought about it beforehand and still decided to give them two sentences. Who he is. And, you know, it's a pleasure to be meeting you, working with you, whatever he said, right? He does not really want to be involved with people. It's not in his nature to go and, you know, try and be friendly with everyone, be buddy-buddy with people in the class. It's not what he wants to do. Now, I think it's interesting that he's like this. 
And I think, like, in terms of Ayana Koji as a character himself, it'd be interesting to see if he was always like this. Was he always like this? Or is this the result of something happening? That's what I don't know. If I was to guess and predict, I would say that he's always been like this. But it stemmed from maybe something that triggered a certain sort of behavior to come like out of him to make him this way that's what i'm thinking now i can't really be sure of that as i said this is me from an anime only perspective so i'm not really sure but he's a very very interesting character i'm not good at anything in particular now we all know that's cap we all know that's cap we all know that he has the ability to go off and right here him saying i'm not really good at anything doesn't really add up with us do you get what i mean however i work hard to get along with everyone and no one knows what to make of it he says he blew it but he didn't i think that's the exact way he wanted to come across i think that's the exact way he wanted to come across I don't know. Let me guys know. What, what do you think? Do you think he blew it as he said? Or do you think that's the way he wanted to come across? Me personally, I think that's the way he wanted to come across. The, the, the reason why I think that is because if you're like Harata here, right? And you come across as the friendly guy. The guy everyone can come and talk to. Right? The chatty guy. The one that's friends with everyone. People from day dot think they can come up to you, start messing with you, start chilling with you. Because you're all in a new school. However... I think in the latest episode of season two, episode eight, the girl with the blue hair, can't remember her name. She was just like, oh, Ayana Koji can actually talk. I thought he was invisible. Do you get what I mean? I think that's the way he wanted to be perceived. I think he wanted to be perceived as someone that is barely noticed. So also in episode one of season one, I found this scene very interesting where Ayana Koji is just sitting in his room. He looks at his phone and sees that you get 100,000 per month. And he breaks it down for us. He says most people decided to go and live their lives. Most people decided to buy consoles, decided to live the high life. However, he decided to save his money, live within his means. Don't do anything too flashy. This is the first real sign that I really caught cool, that he was quite on the ball switched on and intelligent um i think because he realized that the school actually has a motive while most people went and blew their money went from a hundred thousand down to like twenty thousand or so i think he went from a hundred thousand to like eighty eight thousand now i'm not sure that could have been herikta but i know i think he still had a decent amount of money left and then when it came to that second episode, most people are just like, whoa, wait, we, we didn't know that, blah, 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 where's our money? But he's sitting there all calm and collected. I didn't spend my money. I stayed switched on and I knew what you were on. He's a cold character. As he breaks it down here, most students decided to make the most of their school life. So look at what they bought. Day after day, they blew the monthly allowance of 100,000 like it was nothing. He's switched on, knows the game. The teacher was very lenient. And look, he, at this whole time, this whole time as he's breaking it down, right, the classroom of the elite right here are painting the picture for us. They are painting the picture for us. Which, at the time, I didn't realise. I have to admit, at the time, I didn't realise. But looking at it now, they're clearly showing us who within the class uses their head, who's switched on, who's smart, who, sh who knows the value of certain things like money. Most people couldn't probably get into that school, but these people did. Diana Koji's not taking his school life, his education for granted. Now, although he doesn't go out of his way to probably get the highest scores he could get, he's still switched on and intelligent enough to know what the school really be trying to do. 
And in this scene right here, you can literally just see him. He's watching the girls talking. He's watching pseudo sleep right here. Saying that the teacher's very lenient. But there was more to what he was actually thinking. And then he says, and then May 1st arrived. And this is when people found, found out, how come? Where's the 100,000? Okay, my, my apologies. He has 82,235 private points, I believe it is. Or I'm not sure. Right? He's sitting there calm and collected, as I said. Everyone's, everyone else, other than her Richter, and maybe Koenji, are in uproar. Hey, teacher, we didn't get our points. And this is where she goes in. See, the mumps' points have already been allocated. Mm-hmm. She can say that for certain. So, looking at everyone else, look at the two people that look so calm. Her Richter and Ayana Koji. See, and then the teacher goes off. What a bunch of idiots you are. A combined total of 98 tidiness and absences. She goes in. The teacher goes in right here. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say why she goes in. 391 instances of talking and cell phone usage in class. Now how could she have known that? How could she have known that? It's because the school's monitoring them. Who knew that? Herikta? Now I'm not saying Herikta knew that because of Manabu. I'm not I don't know. I don't know if she knew that because of Manabu. But, who else knew? Ayana Koji. How, would I, how else would Ayana Koji have known unless he wasn't here? If he wasn't two steps ahead thinking, thinking about the repercussions of 100,000. That's a lot of money. Everyone else, quite a month's work. They didn't do anything... At this school, your grades and performance evaluations are reflected in the monthly points you're given. My assessment on, of you has resulted in the loss of all 100,000 points you were to be given. The points you were receiving for this month are zero. So for everyone else, if you spent your points, bought your PS5s, bought your new phones, bought your flashy clothes and all of that jazz, you're broke for this month. You mean I have to live on no money for the month? No one told us that. And look at Koji out here sitting with his phone with 82,000 points. Probably just buying the necessities. And he looks at her because she's not worried. And maybe Koenji too because he's smiling. See, and that put that line right here that she... And I'm sorry for showing you biddies, but... That line right now is probably what went over everyone's head other than Ayana Koji, maybe Koenji, probably Sakura and Herikta. This school judges students based on merit. Now, if you knew, if you knew that, you know what that meant. Which is said, you're garbage. And then we see Ayana Koji looking like this. And I think from this point, everyone had to think, there's something up with dude. He clearly on something. There's something up with dude. But that's episode one of season one. Let's continue to look into Ayana Koji. The reason why he does things. Why he is like he is. So, in episode 2 of season 1, we have a conversation where Suzanne and Ayana Koji are sitting by the pool. And she asks him, do you play any sports? And Ayana Koji plays it down and says, no. I'm not, I'm not proud of it, but I was club free in middle school. If I go and think about episode, maybe three, I think it was episode three. The episode where Ayana Koji goes hands to hands with Manabu, you will see that there's clearly something, maybe sports wise, I'm not sure, that maybe he did. Because there's no way, and I could be overlooking this, but there's no way... But he didn't do any sort of defensive club or something of the sort. There's no way he's just naturally gifted, if you get what I'm saying. Now, some people can be, but I think in his case, he must be. Because she even, her actor even points out, she even points out, but still, the development of your forearms and, and then her actor son, she was about to say more. Now, I know what she's getting at. If you look at Ayana Koji, right? He has an aesthetic kind of body that would make you think that he played sports or looked after his body. 
in some sort of way. Now, I want to go back to season two where they did the strength test, where they had to grip the thing for the sports festival. Now, Ayana Koji, trying to be too smart at that point, right? Thought that the average score was like, I think, a 40 or a 60. I can't remember which it was. So he pulled the average score. Which made me think, this guy is holding back. There's clearly some sort of element to him that we're not seeing. That we're not getting, if you get what I mean. There's clearly an element. Now, I know these two, like, I wouldn't have known because season two. But even here, I just thought his physical body, if you, you know when someone works out because they look like they work out. Do you get what I mean? The, the body, bodies, body types don't really lie too much. Now, you get the odd occasions where people will really surprise you. But Ayana Koji does look like someone who works out. I want to talk about Ko Ayana Koji's using of his resources here in the first season. I think in the first season, it's kind of interesting to see kind of what he does, the lengths of such of which he goes to do certain things. Now, at this point, he doesn't really know about Kashida. But I feel that at this point, he hasn't really made like a solid friend. Him and Harikto have been together, but you wouldn't really say they were friends. Now, I feel like he wants to get put through to Kashida here so she can help. Basically using her. Basically using her. And I think, looking back at it now, <clears throat> from an anime-only perspective, she kind of potentially realize that maybe she was being used without having the friendship that she actually wanted without having the attention that she actually wanted to get from him i was thinking about this this is what i was thinking so heretic says no kashida says i'm surprised i've never used Radom's internal phone line before and i was kind of thinking about this why is it that ayana koji looked at his phone He's in bed. He looked at his phone and then used the phone lines. And I think the reason why is because he doesn't actually have her contact details. And that indicated to me that he doesn't see her as a friend. Because probably most people in the class right now probably have each other's phone numbers. To contact each other. But he doesn't have hers. He asked to be put through. Through the internal phone line. Which is also another indication to me. That she's possibly being used. They've had, they've had instances where they've spoke. Where they've been walking together and everything. So if they really were friends like that. He'd have a number or some way to contact her. Again I'm not... I, not sure guys let me know this is my first time doing this so i'm not sure you've been selected as a goodwill ambassador for the sake of our class please give it a try so look she says oh Anna, i'll give you my cell phone number he says are you sure yeah i mean we were classmates why didn't he not ask for it i'm sorry i never had a chance to give it to you before that's cap there has been chances that's because he doesn't want the interaction Call me any time. And then she's swiddling. She's, swidd she's in the bed. Telling him I just got out of the bath. She likes him. Anna Koji has the... He has the power to draw girls. Unspoken. Like... Like he ain't even trying. But... He, but ju just from this, he kind of rizzed her up somehow. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. So, he goes to buy something. Again, not really trying to use his money too much comes across this situation i came here to catch up to you she says herita and who brother and this is when manabu starts going into her but i'm not going to get into that because we'll do a video for him N now i can't lie this is the first time we really see Suzanne herita as vulnerable and i think it's interesting what we see from ayana koji in this instant Don't you not think it's weird that 
He wouldn't give up his seat for an elderly lady. But he'd come in to save Susanne from getting the Air Force Palm Girl Winfist from Manabu. See? And he grabs him. He, he comes straight in and grabs him. Now, for someone who's really reserved and everything, right? Really reserved. I wouldn't really have thought that that's what he would have been on. I don't think he would have got involved. So this really surprised me. And I guess it surprised a lot of other people who are anime only too. You're really going to drive that in, weren't you? Let her go. I've never heard her speak like that. Trust. Look. There's no way you're telling me this guy did no sort of exercise, sports, like whatever. Look at the reflexes on this dodge. Look at this. Matrix, Matrix type shit. Whoa. Dodge that too. Close call. And then Manabe's like, I bet this guy's serious. Let me let me get into striking position. Goes for it. He blocks it. Makes him back off. You move well. Do you practice something? Because Manabu must practice something. Because I can't lie, he kind of had the hands right there. I'm not going to lie to you. He says piano and calligraphy. That's right. I've heard there was a new student who got 50s in every subject in, on his entrance exam. Now, Manabu's switched on too. But obviously, as I said, I'll give him his own video. This is going to be the part one of Diana Koji one because I got to go out soon, right? But he's already saying, you move well. And I've heard about you too. 50 on every subject of the entrance exams. That seems a bit odd. Like he's holding back. You got 50 on the quiz the other day too. 50 is actually half of 100. Was that intentional? Penances are freaky. They're not though. You're a unique man, see? Manabu can read people. Manabu ain't dumb. G G Ma Manab There's a reason why we see later on in these two, in the two series like seasons that we have of this. But Manabu sees Ayana Koji as a sort of a threat. He doesn't even see his own sister as a threat. But he sees Ayana Koji as a threat. And this episode too, and like at the time, was an indication to me that one, Ayana Koji lied about sports, and two, right, he's a lot smarter than he we, we actually give him credit for initially because we think he's in class D. I'm generally surprised you've made a friend. And she says he's not my friend. So at this point, Ayana Koji still doesn't have a friend. And that was, that was for me, that was for me the second coldest moment of season one. Ayana Koji versus Manabu, crazy scenes. And he doesn't like to get in um, any situations that, you know, creates any indication of stress or fighting or whatever. He's just not about it. So there's a couple more moments that I want to go through or else this video is going to be very, very long. Um, so the, there's two more moments that I really want to kind of go through and break down. Actually, there's three more moments, actually. So, we have Ayana Koji using Kashida to get another class member's kind of test papers results from last year um, to basically help people from getting expelled from the class. And he uses her to do it. And I think personally, deep down, she's kind of pressed by this. She's not really happy about it. Now, she likes the fact that she was invited somewhere by Ayana Koji, but she's not really happy that... It's not the way that she wants things to really go down. And seeing his reaction confirm something to him. Ayana Koji again, being analytical, being thinking of what actually goes down. We have Ayana Koji and the teacher talking. I have to say one thing about this teacher. She is very, very, very on the ball. And I think we downplay, I think we actually downplay the teacher. But the teacher is very, very cunning without us actually knowing this she's very on the ball knows what's going on um but she doesn't really pry into stuff but she clearly clearly knows who's switched on in the class and who's not and this is beyond test results so i do like the teacher's character he goes teacher may i ask you a question in japan right now do you think society is equal 
How many students do you know will come up to the uh, sensei teacher and ask that question? Do you think society is equal in Japan? And she goes, that's quite a question. And she answers, society is certainly not equal. Not a bit. I agree, the word equal is a lie. But we humans are thinking creatures. That rules require at least the appearance of equal application. Sell me one point to add to Sudo's English test score. And this is where she got her. This is where he got her. You're an interesting one. You want me to sell you test points? You told us, um, you told us this on the first day. Rules must be applied equally, even on midterm tests. He nearly got the teacher at his own game. However, that doesn't mean you can afford it. How much then? If you give me a hundred thousand points right here and now, I'll sell it to you. See, the teach, the teacher really be, she really be smart and cunning. I can't lie, I like her character. But this is how I think. Herita, yeah, so Herita still had 88,000 points. So I think this is where she's just like, okay. So Ayana Koji and Herita are really about it. Really about it. However, could it be a thing where Ayana Koji told Herita to wait, to hear what it was, how much it was going to be, and then come forward? Koji's too smart. I knew you people would be interested. See, she knew already. Crazy stuff. Ko Koji... Definitely a mastermind. But the last part I want to go into is this part here. The ending of part three. So, Kashida's kind of confronting Ayana Koji about the fact that he's always with her to hanging out and all the girls are talking about in class. And she's jealous. And he plays off just saying her is just his neighbour. But he said friend at first, so maybe he thought, let me not hurt her feelings and say something different since Kashida's currently not really my friend. And she goes off, but she forgets her phone. He thought girls on the upper floor goes outside and follows her. And that's the thing. He doesn't actually need to be hiding at this moment. He could just give the phone back. So why did he hide? And he even says it. I don't even need to be hiding really. But he does anyway. Maybe show him that he actually does think something of her. Something different of Kashida. This is Koji, I think, I think this is his instinct, ability to read people. And then here's her different. Because he's hiding, her phone goes off peak. And I love the way he plays the game. She asks him, did you hear that? He says, well, if I said I didn't, would you believe me? Knowing that she's already not going to believe him. Knowing that now that he's seen the true side, there's kind of no going back. If you tell anyone about this, you'll pay. And he's still composed at this moment. How exactly? I'll tell everyone you tried to the four little word me. That'd be a false accusation. Still staying calm in this, still staying calm right now. Most guys would be panicking. He still stays calm. She grabs him. Oh, it's not a false accusation. And puts his hand right there. See, there's proof. I understand. It still does not break character at this point. Let me go, please. Still remains composed. I want to ask you just one question. Can you promise me right now that you won't tell anyone what you saw? And then he says, which was this? It was a bar to me. I know it's not even that deep, but he just has bars. He says, hey, Kashida, tell me, which is the real you? Facts. He already knows which one's the real her. He already knows. And the ending song's just called. Mm -mm -mm. Golly. The next one we're going to look at is episode six so episode six um this one actually blew my mind of season one blew my mind of season one so there's a sequence here where they're walking home in the rain and her Richter pulls back Ayana Koji and set basically says look why did you help me I want to know what you were thinking and he says, I want to live my days in peace, which you can see he doesn't want to be involved in too much. But I said to you, it's interesting how he got involved with that, but wouldn't just let the elderly lady sit down. Now, for me, a family affair is a family affair. If it goes too far, I'm a step in. But if it's between a family, like a family and I'm not part of it, I wouldn't really step into that. Now, however, Manabu was going to go too far if he was really going to drive the palm. I'm not going to lie to you. <clears throat> but I, I don't know. It is true. Why did he help? 
he doesn't really consider people as friends so why did he do it he says i'm surprised i just want to help a friend but into kashida he says we're just neighbors and she says that's a lie you've never cared about your friends in fact he doesn't have any really what she means just who are you and this is where it got interesting so we get a bit of a backstory as a koji as like a small i guess maybe you'd say he was in primary school i don't know how you'd kind of say it was but even there he's still so composed like there's nothing in the eyes like basically one of his i'm not one of his classmates will say that literally kind of is gasping for air right next to him and you see all the other kids kind of freak out but he just stares the, he just stares him down doesn't do anything I hope we get into class A, but, and this is where he gets a bit pressed. I think this is the first, this was the first time I saw the real Ayana Koji. I think this is the first time with this look, I saw the real Ayana Koji. Don't pry into my life. What do you have to hide exactly then? Why? Why? It's a simple question. And they end it like that, cold. He, he's too much. And in the last moment, which I think everyone was really waiting for, is the season finale, where he basically gave her it. He gave her it to credit for the for the survival test, right? And she finally found him. She kind of, you know, says you kind of didn't have to do that, but at the end of the day, says thank you. Um, and you know, she's like, I will let you hang out with me, but don't act all buddy buddy. So let's let's kind of see that. Richard, do you remember what I said back then? And his whole ch tone at this point changed. And if you haven't seen my reaction to season one, episode 12, right? I'll put it in the cards. Make sure you go check it out. It blew my mind when he... You need allies. See, grudgingly, I will acknowledge you as an ally too. It took you 12 episodes. However, the thing is, as Koji's always said... He's stuck to himself. He plays people. Herita was the... F Sorry, Kashida was the first one to be used. She was the first one to be used. Now, I know from season two, Herita and Kashida sort of have a history, but I think it was more than that. Kashida liked Ayana Koji. When these two got close, she didn't like it, and that's why she acted out of pocket right now he said that they are only neighbors now she's trying to acknowledge him as an ally now that she changing he's changing her and koji's changing her richter he's getting her to the places that she needs to be she's gaining allies and everything now she wants to acknowledge him as a friend but that only seems when it's kind of beneficial to her now, she does say thank you. I'm not going to get it wrong. Like, she does say thank you. But she says, so I don't want you acting buddy-buddy with me once we're back at school. But we act buddy-buddy anyway. You can't do things without me. We're only working, to reach working together to reach class A. So how can we not act buddy-buddy in that situation? But I will say one thing. Thank you. Yeah. And I, pre I put it to she say that. And in this moment here... City boy! City boy! This moment here... Is when I just lost it. I literally lost it with dude. And I said. And I'll go back to what I said. In episode 12 of season 1. There's certain times when Ayana Koji can look at you. And there's no emotion in his eyes. You cannot tell what he's thinking. For this exact moment. There's no emotion in his eyes. Just. Determination. Desire. Hunger to get to the goal. He's right now, he's probably looking straight through her Richter. Straight through her Richter, because the guy's got stuff on his brain. He's got places he needs to be. Now, I don't know what Ayana Koji's end goal is, to be honest. I think it's more than just class A. If I was to predict what his goal was, I would say it would be to kind of play people as pawns and to. Um, to basically do what he wants as a background figure not having to do be the primary person to do things to kind of play puppet master and to basically lead 
from the sidelines basically not be the main character like he's the side character but he the main character type shit like he he he's crazy he's crazy and he says this is what's crazy this is what he says no no emotion in my dude but her i've never once thought of you as an ally crazy stuff crazy not you not kashida not hirata all people are nothing but tools why are you looking down at a girl who's clearly needs help with no emotion again? This is why I think he's always been like this. It doesn't matter how it's done. It doesn't matter what needs to be sacrificed. Looking right through her, not even listening to what she's saying right now. He's a cold dude. In this world, winning is everything. And he wants to win. He wants to get to class A and rule the school. That's what I believe he wants to do. As long as I win in the end, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. Facts. As I said to you, this guy wants to rule the school. That's what I'm predicting um from literally what i've seen from from ayana koji personally um but he wants to do it from behind the scenes he doesn't want to be the main guy to do it as i said ayana koji is my favorite character in this anime he's becoming my favorite one of my favorite characters just out of anime i've seen because he's just such a cold dude um but i predict right obviously i we've seen certain parts of season two but going forward Anakoji is going to get more pawns on his side to do what he wants to do. To get to class A, to take over, to kind of get dirt on people but not use it in the way that you think he's going to use it. He has allies. Keyword being allies, not friends. He has allies. Everyone else is being used as tools. Kashida was the first person he used as a tool. Herata was second. Herikta is third. The, all three of them are being used as tools. In fact, C Class D is being used as a tool, really, for him to get to where he wants to get to. And he's going to mold them into how he wants and how he envisions he's going to get them there. Now, there is going to be a couple complications along the way, like Ruin, Class A's leader, maybe Manabu, potentially. But at the end of the day, he says winning's all that matters and he's going to use people as tools. He'll act friendly with them, kind of. Even though he doesn't really say too much. But at the end of the day, I think he will get done what he wants to get done. However, Koji's just a cold dude, man. He's just a cold dude. Now, guys, I hope you guys did enjoy that. Um, I'm hoping it was okay. I mean, I'm not sure. It probably wasn't. But I, I don't know. Let me know what you think. This is my first time doing this sort of video. So I probably missed a couple things and maybe didn't explain it the way I didn't like wanted to but hopefully hopefully you guys enjoyed it if you'd like to see more just hit the like button get in the comments and let me know um but yeah hope you guys did enjoy it and i'll see you guys in the next reaction video take care peace